testing the audio. Yes. All right. <clears throat> well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this digitally enabled online meeting of the Council of the Municipality of North Perth held on Monday, January 18th, 2021. I'm Mayor Todd Kaysenberg, and I'll call this meeting to order. I ask the deputy clerk to note our starting time for the minutes as 7 p.m. Today's meeting is being streamed live on the Municipality of North Perth YouTube channel, and I'm told that it's a good feed and will be available there after the meeting as an archived video. Anyone who is invited to speak will be recorded and their voice, image, and comments will form part of the live stream. The chair and or the clerk have the discretion and authority at any time to direct the termination or interruption of live streaming. Such direction will only be given in exceptional circumstances where deemed relevant. Circumstances may include instances where the content of debate is considered misleading, defamatory, or potentially inappropriate to be published. Thank you. Welcome to those who are joining us via the YouTube channel. Welcome to councillors and staff who will participate in tonight's meeting. At this time, I invite your decorum over the course of the meeting, as always. Before we move to agenda item 2.1, uh, pertaining to pecuniary interest, a quick congratulations to Councillor Terry Seiler, who became a first-time grandpa over the weekend, and the beautiful baby is Lenny Jude Seiler, and we're excited to welcome her to uh, the North Perth family. Congratulations to... Uh, to Terry and to Debbie. Now, for the benefit of those unfamiliar with our council practices, provincial legislation requires councillors with a potential pecuniary or financial interest in any item at the council table to declare this interest and to remove her or himself from discussions and voting on the item. In accordance with recommended protocol at this time, I invite all councillors with a perceived pecuniary interest, including those who have declared already in writing to verbally advise the chair in public session and to submit documentation to this effect in writing to the clerk. Councillors are further reminded that should a potential conflict arise during the meeting, they may so declare and act at any point in the meeting. Let's go alphabetically through the ones we've had already and I'll call on Councillor Anstett first. Thanks, Mayor Kaysenberg. I'd like to declare a pecuniary interest this evening on item 5.4.1, the accounts, as my son attends the St. Mary's daycare and also on item 13.1, the confirmatory bylaw. Thank you. Just checking about the numbering. There was a little bit of a numbering change in tonight's agenda, Councillor Anstett, and we moved um, the, the, the uh, things to 5.3 as opposed to 5.4, financial reports. So I assume I that see. you're referencing. Yeah, so in that case, it would be uh, 5.3, uh, the accounts, and then also the confirmatory bylaw as well. Thanks. I think they did that just to keep us on our toes. <laughs> Thanks, Councillor Anstead. Councillor Barnes, you're next. Uh, thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg. Yes, I would declare a conflict on 5.3.1, 11.1, 12, if there's any reporting out and 13.1, the confirmatory, as I have grandchildren attending the North Perth Spinwright Child and Family Centre, as well as the St. Mary's Daycare and after school programming. Thank you. Thanks. And um, Councillor Behrens has raised an interesting point that um, you might want to consider, Councillor Anstett. Uh, you can certainly declare later in the meeting if we come to that point, but um, there are some other matters pertaining to childcare in the agenda tonight. Yeah, thanks, Mayor Caseberg. Through you, I actually was on the fence as to whether or not I would declare because we don't know the content at this point. But um, I think just to be on the safe side, I will declare a potential pecuniary interest on that, that item as well. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Deputy Mayor Kellum is next. Yes, good evening. Through you, Mayor Caseberg, I would like to declare pecuniary interest on item 5.2.1, as I am an employee at Ideal Supply. 5.3.1 with regards to the counts uh, pertaining to Perth Metals specifically, and then obviously 13.1, the confirmatory bylaw. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Are there any other councillors um, who have not pre-advised that wish to make a declaration? 
Seeing none, uh, let's just review our virtual processes. Um, as usual, I'll be systematically working to seek consent from various councillors as movers and seconders of the various resolutions and bylaws that lie ahead. I will do this alphabetically to some extent. Should a councillor not wish to respond to the request, they may say so, and I will move to the next name on the alphabetical list. Regarding speaking to our business councillors tonight, will identify themselves through our conferencing technologies chat function. The clerk is assisting me tonight in maintaining the speaking order from that source. Councillors are allowed in their turn to deliver a primary question or comment and may make one supplemental without me. And I guess what I'm realizing is uh, with regards to supplementals, if I count to six and I don't hear back from you, then I figure you're done. Uh, we will follow the speaking order carefully and any councillor wishing to have a second say will have to indicate again to the process and go to the bottom of the speaking list. This is a normal process consistent with Robert's rules of order. Our councillors, as always, and staff too, uh, if I believe you're not audible, I will let you know. Um, councillors are further asked to maintain a mute state during the web conference until I have called upon you for a verbal reaction. Should any of your votes not show up in our eScribe software, I'll call on you when things seem stalled to register a manual vote. At that time, take yourself off mute, answer yes or no on the motion, then return to, to mute. Thank you. So let's turn to item five, or sorry, 2.2. I'm getting leaping ahead. 2.2 on our agenda. I have a motion before me for the adoption of the agenda for tonight's meeting that reads as follows, that the agenda for tonight's meeting be approved. Uh, let's start with Councillor Duncan. Would you serve as our mover for that one tonight? Yes, I'll move that. Thank you, and Deputy Mayor Callum, will you be our seconder? Yes, I will second that motion, thank you. Thanks. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. Select technical slowdown. It's not triggering. Okay, Council, we're experiencing a slight technical difficulty. It seems. No. Yeah, the, the, the motions aren't in the system, so it's going to take me a minute to add them or just go with the verbal ones you have there, Mayor Kaysenberg. Okay. Um, with regards to voting then, should I be just taking manual votes for the course of the meeting or? Um, for now, for now, I'll try to see what's happened. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, so uh, we have this motion duly moved and seconded that the agenda for tonight's meeting be approved. Are there any opposed? Please make it manifest. We're not seeing any, so that's carried. Thank you. And uh, we appreciate uh, the group team uh, working to solve that problem. Uh, we're now at agenda item number three, the so-called consent agenda. These items are placed on our agenda because they are believed to be non-contentious, yet they require councils recognition and or action. Grouping them expedites our business. However, any councillor wishing to extract an item from the consent agenda for discussion, debate, and individual action may do so. There are four items on our consent agenda tonight, including the minutes of our last regular council meeting. Councillors, do any of you have a desire to extract any of these items for further discussion or action? Please so indicate in the chat function. we're not seeing anything so i have a resolution for our consideration that consent items 3.1 to 3.4 be received for information and the minutes of the january 11 2021 regular council meeting be adopted and i call on councillor johnston to be our member tonight for that good evening mr mayor and i would certainly move that thank you and councillor richardson will you serve as our seconder i would be happy to second that motion Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate on the resolution on the floor? Um, Deputy Clerk Beer, are we uh, doing this manually or by eScribe? Uh, manually, please. Okay, certainly. So I'll carry on until you tell us. Um, so Council uh, duly moved and seconded this motion. Uh, are there any opposed? Please so indicate.
Seeing none, the clerk confirms there are none. That motion is carried. Thank you. Uh, at this time, it's proposed that we move to agenda item number four. And uh, tonight we have uh, no indication of uh, public meetings uh, uh, for our attention. Uh, likewise, we have no delegations that have registered in advance of the meeting. So we can move past agenda item four on to agenda item number five, reports from departments and key staff. Let's turn first to the reports from the CAO's department. Um, item 5.1.1 brings forward to council a report on consulting work that is nearing completion pertaining to the approach and efforts that will be needed to establish free public Wi-Fi in downtown and busy community areas of North Perth. I'm going to call on Community Development Coordinator Kim Couch to give details and provide some possibilities regarding the next steps. Welcome, Ms. Couch. Thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg and members of council. Um, just as a little bit of background, in fall of 2019, I was requested by the Economic Development Committee to investigate the um, an implementation plan for public Wi-Fi across North Perth. So we did have a, um, a very thorough RFP process and it was awarded at that time. The intent was to understand the infrastructure needs and initial operational costs and ongoing operational costs so that for funding applications and for future planning we would have a good sense of the implementation requirements um, and costing for having public wi-fi in the downtowns and um, different facilities and public areas in north perth so following this rfp um, we have been progressing on the on the project it has had a little bit of um, delay because of COVID and with some of the other um, resource demands on the, on the project. They, um, they are nearing the end of the project, but we have had challenges from the beginning in being able to acquire details about connectivity. Um, in particular, well, in um, Atwood Moncton, but mostly in um, Listowel, and because of that, I have shown some of the, the costings through investigation. And so that is what we're, one thing that we're requesting of council tonight, based on the costings that are supplied and will increase based on those, um, those summaries there. Would council like for, um, for us to continue to investigate that as an option? Um, we will need to approach the ISP or the internet service providers to try to gain more information and potential and potential engaging of um, rental of different connectivity. Um, initially, that information would not was not provided due to confidentiality and security concerns. So we um, so that was not able to be factored into the original estimates. So it will um, take additional, additional time and to, to do that portion as well as connectivity that will need to happen, um, something called random access points for distance between current access points in various about 10 to 12 different spots within Listowel will need to have sites located where connectivity can happen. And that would, in, I'd say probably eight to 10 of those spots would require developing agreements with businesses or business or property owners to place those connection points um, on their buildings or at sites that are under their control. So it will take some um, definitely considerable effort on staff's part, as well as um, time to, to pull that information together to come up with a a more fulsome total to the costs. And so I think, so that's that's where we are right now. And one issue that's brought this um, a little bit more urgent is that the um, Rural Economic Development Program has recently launched new funding. Um, it is due February the 1st. So all applications for this new program or this new round of red funding are due by February 1st. Um, 
public Wi-Fi, downtown Wi-Fi are one of the categories that are considered. The only um, projects that are close to being ready and that would be able to be submitted in an application would be the Atwood and Moncton portions of the project. And so I think as we've stated, we have um, two different options for council's consideration for whether we continue to investigate further um, to gain more details about the costs of this project, if that's something that council would like to direct us to do um, or not. And then further that um, whether we should be applying for the RED program, um, recognizing that this particular project is funded at 30% by OMAFRA. And so the municipality would be responsible for funding the 70% ring for the app. And that's, that's just for the Atwood and the Moncton portions of the project. So um, the consultant has provided some background information about public Wi-Fi, um, some of the general learnings that has been experienced across, um, across communities where this has been implemented. In many cases, the, pub, the Wi-Fi has been owned by the municipality. That is not the case in North Perth. We would need to be securing it from an ISP. Um, and also um, in a lot of communities, businesses provide that service. Um, and yeah, so I've, I've given some additional comments there provided by the consultant um, the final report will be coming shortly, and I will certainly send that along for your information once that's received. But this base um, cost amount is is there. There will be additional costs um, over and above that for operations, um, for ongoing management support of the programs, as well as some equipment and other connection costs that would go on top of those amounts that I've supplied. So I am certainly um, open to any questions or um, comments that you might have at this time. Thanks, uh, Ms. Couch. Um, uh, Councillors, any questions or first comments? Prepare folks, we have on the list. Councillor Seilers first. Thank you, Mayor Todd. Thank you, Kim, for your report. I guess uh, reading the report, what goes in my mind is what we had back before at our library with the lo loitering issues that we that we had uh, down in our front of our library there. So, do you know of any other communities that are doing this program, or how how they make out? Or that's my only concern is will, will this create a loitering problem in our downtowns, or that's just uh, a question I have for you. Thank you. Yeah, I don't, I don't have specific examples of, of smaller communities that have it. Um, I know communities, Stratford has, has public Wi-Fi, um, London has public Wi-Fi, and I, I'm sure other communities do as well. I have not heard of specific concerns about, about loitering. Um, the consultant did raise the potential that it does um, it has been known to attract people who um, do not want to use their own their own Wi-Fi for whatever reasons and may choose to use public Wi-Fi so it isn't reflected in their on their system. Um, so I just wanted to to bring that as a con as a bit of a, a, a concern and um, but no, I have not heard of specific communities that have faced that as an issue, but um, may have happened. Okay, thank you. Uh, next is Councillor Richardson. Um, thank you, Kim. Uh, th uh, through you, Mayor Kaysenberg. I'm looking at the time that we're in, like if we're looking for internet to try and get it out to our rural areas, and I do understand uh, the initiative that we're looking at this, but seeing as how we don't own the ISP, there's going to be ongoing maintenance costs for this that I'm not sure if the juice is worth the squeeze to really jump forward with this right now, although it could be of benefit in the future. I would rather see any dollars and cents put forward to this um, 
just given the, the way some of the contracts are being written for new cell, pro, uh, cell phone providers that the amount of data that is now available, it's no longer limited and in, in, in a bottleneck. It's nice to be in Wi-Fi, but I don't think it's absolutely paramount and going to affect, it will affect some, but not a lot. Um, I just would rather see any money that's going to go towards this public Wi-Fi possibly go towards new initiatives to getting all of our rural community fully connected to high speed um, when and that that comes. But I would rather see funds directed towards that. That I don't know if this is uh, if this should technically be in the cards at this point in time for North Perth. But that's my two cents. Thank you, Councillor Rothwell. Next. Thanks, Mayor Todd, through you, and, and uh, thanks, Kim, for your report. A couple questions I have, and this follows up on uh, Councillor Seiler's comments uh, regarding our libraries. Uh, do we know, uh, is the public access to the Wi-Fi in the new library in Moncton, as well as the library in Atwood, and the library in Listowel, is that a, truly available to, library paint, or to the public, or do they have to be library patrons inside of the building? Um, I believe, I, I don't know that they, I, I'm not certain. I'm not sure of that, especially with the new development. I know that with the, the Wi-Fi in Moncton, that the area that's being considered is along the trail and along the public spaces outside of um, like the parks and recreation areas there, um, whether it's specific, I'm not, I know that the library and the, act, the connections that are, exist there um, would help to simplify the implementation. Um, the and as well in Atwood, it is along that route that the that the the library is there as well. I, as far as I'm aware, and IT staff were involved in helping to coordinate this information. Um, they people the public are able to access Wi-Fi. I believe when they're in the building. Um, I'm not sure if it's accessible outside of the buildings right now. And I mean, that is a concern by the ISPs, whether it may impact future customers for them. Um, we have said right from the beginning that we would be limiting the duration of time that people would have access to it, as well as how wide of a um, coverage area it would have to help control that and not to impact their um, or limit their, the markets for the ISP. So I would tend to, it, it may, it would potentially, it would have access outside um, if it was to be implemented. I don't know right now whether the coverage at the library in Atwood, for example, whether that reaches outside of the building now or not. I'm not sure. Uh, thank you. I appreciate the uh, response. And, and I guess the, uh, the follow-up uh, question to this is that are, are we aware of the number of businesses uh, within the, our communities that actually offer Wi-Fi to either A, their patrons, or B, in terms of the uh, availability to be in their parking lot and use Wi-Fi, say, for example, uh, Tim Hortons uh, or any of our other businesses that uh, mm -hmm. have Wi-Fi for patrons and so on? I don't, have a, I don't have an exact list. I do know that some businesses offer that, but that, I mean, as you, as you mentioned, like the Tim Hortons and McDonald's and some of those, um, more well-known businesses, some banks may also have that available. Um, I don't have an exhaustive list um, right now of who, who offers and who does not. Thank you very much. Councillor Barron's next. Thank you, Kim, for your report. Uh, through you, Mayor Kaysenberg, just a few comments and just perhaps a clarification. Kim, my understanding when this came up and the reason that economic development specifically was looking at it is this was more uh, free Wi-Fi for the traveling public. This was never meant to be for local people. And, it, and that's the reason. It was never meant to be for local. That's why the time limit, those types of things, et cetera, is because anyone who lives here is expected to either have the broadband or whatever, like this is public Wi-Fi. This is not broadband in any way, shape or form, correct? Well, I think it, it was my understanding what it, 
it was um, initially looked at for both that reasoning as people were traveling through the community, as well for people for youth attraction, that if um, youth may not have connectivity or others that they would have access to it. But because of the time limitation and the um, how far the coverage would be, that it, it would not be a long-term solution that someone um, who is a resident would, would, um, would appeal to. However, it, there wouldn't be a way that we could limit it to only visitors. I think you would have to have it available to anyone um, that was wanting to access it. There would be no way for us to control that, I don't believe. Um, just supplemental comments to that. And I understand the concept of smart cities and things like that, but we're really only 14,000 people. And I think right now our main concern and a couple of the con councillors already touched on it is the broadband connectability and viability um, for the rural area. And we know that, you know, um, just last week, I believe it was, we were looking at, you know, closing an arena and closing a library. Um, I'm not sure that the timing is right on this. Um, and I say that because my concerns are in the presentation, we don't know how many local businesses are offering it. I, I believe Zares does, I believe um, the Walmart does. There's a number of services that already supply it in town if you know where to go. Um, but the costing here concerns me because in all of them, like it says that the costs are not in inclusive and, and they don't include the operating expenditures, the internet connections, the site connections, the cost of any agreements like this. I'm not sure what these numbers do include then, but my concern is even for, I believe it's the second option to move forward with the application, um, you know, we looked at closing a library for a whole lot less than uh, what we're proposing here. And I personally believe the library is far more important. Those are my comments. I will be voting against um, option two. Thank you. Thanks, Clerk Perkels. Do we have anyone else? Okay. I have a couple of questions myself. Um, Tim, do you have any indication through the, the course of this project about the Stratford experience with public Wi-Fi? Do we know what our, our friendly neighbor has uh, experienced and done with uh, their uh, Wi-Fi system? Um, in what regards, sorry? Is it like utilization or? Yes, utilization, abuse, that kind of thing. I, I'm sorry, I have not gathered that data. I, I, I did not um, investigate that. I was just looking more for the cost and uh, the implementation cost was what I was directed to to gather. So that's what what I have gathered. So I did not I did not speak directly to Stratford. Sure, that's fine. Um, perhaps um, drawing in CA Snell um, with regards to the next question. Um, you know, a lot of talk has gone into the Internet of Things and its potential for communities to do business more effectively through uh, smart technologies implemented in monitoring of parking lots and, and the like. Um, I'm wondering if, uh, if you have any thoughts, uh, whether the staff team has talked about IoT um, possibilities in North Perth and, and whether uh, that would have implications uh, access through a project like the one that we are contemplating. Thank you, Mayor. I'm Kaysen Brigg. Um, so one, one of the things that, I, that was on Council's opportunities to look into in the future last week was, was paid parking. Um, we haven't done a ton of research on that at this point yet, but that certainly is one of the options um, looking at using um, more technology. We're certainly not advocating going back to a metered paid parking system. It would be more like what we see in other communities that are either using internet-based or, or um, terminal-based paid parking. But we haven't um, gone down that road far enough to know what kind of options and the costing that we'd, we'd be looking at. 
Okay, so still preliminary days, I'm taking it. Um, then Kim, I have one more question and that is, um, are there other um, opportunities for this next red round for um, our community that are sort of available to us and uh, close to submission ready if, if we want to do so? Um, we really, we haven't investigated. I mean, we know that the county is submitting um, one, one red program for sure. And they have already received confirmation that two other red programs have, have been approved and we'll be implementing those um, in, in 2021. So we, we are always drawn on to support in those implementations as well. We do have the facade improvement program that we are currently implementing in North Perth. So I think we felt that, that um, those different commitments by our own program and as well our own bread project, as well with what uh, may be coming forward from the county that that would, would, would be pretty busy with that. Um, and I don't have any other projects um, ready to go that we, Red does like to have financial partnerships and some of these other things in place. Um, it really, or that really does help help things or regional in nature to help and support the success of the Red application. And I don't have anything ready for that. Thank you. Uh, Clerk Bearfels, did you see there was another? Mr. Andreessen. Yes, thank you uh, through you, Mayor Kaysenberg. Um, I, I've kind of had um, some rethoughts about, about this whole idea around having um, public Wi-Fi in public areas in our downtowns. And I know this was brought up prior really to COVID really setting into the province and, and our country. And I think what I've come to realize is that Wi-Fi and access to internet is absolutely critical for business and uh, especially in our rural areas. And to me, I think, you know, the funding that is being proposed in here, yes, 30% uh, could be covered. The, the problem is, is that I don't think it's really, um, this project is really going to meet the needs that I really think we have. And that is in our, in our far reaching rural communities where Wi-Fi isn't strong enough, isn't, um, reaching further enough and powerful enough for um, these bu businesses to conduct themselves in very efficient ways. So although, you know, I think it's a great idea, I think we have greater need, especially with this type of um, service. And I would prefer to see this service go into our back roads, into our, our um, rural areas, rural businesses that really truly are struggling and, uh, and that's how I feel at this time. Thank you. Thank you, anyone else, Clerk Bearfelds? Okay, I think I'm hearing enough of the will of council to anticipate that uh, what we should uh, do is pursue option one. Uh, that's what I'm hearing um, from the comments that have been made. Uh, so let's uh, consider that unless someone significantly objects. Uh, I have a resolution uh, as described in our reports, called Option 1. And the resolution reads as follows, that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth directs staff to end further pursuit of public Wi-Fi in North Perth downtowns and outdoor public spaces, and further that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth does not support the submission of a rural economic red project application for public Wi-Fi implementation in the downtowns of Atwood and Milton. Can I call on Councillor Rothwell to be our mover on that one? I so move. And Councillor Seiler, will you be our seconder? Yes, I will second that. Thank you. Okay, so we think maybe we have eScribe back up. But before we go there, uh, let's just see if there are any further comments or debate on this one. Okay, let's have that vote. We'll see if it works. Uh, it's not going to work again. I wasn't able to do it. It's not going to work. So are there any opposed? Uh, 
Or do we see anything? Okay, so that motion is carried. Thank you, Ms. Couch. You know, I know how much work that was. Uh, let's see, next up is item 5.2. Uh, for item 5.2.1, this council is invited to remove a one foot reserve in a residential land development area by Maycomb Developments for the purposes of allowing access between the developed lands as previously approved in the existing public road, McLaren Avenue North. I note Deputy Mayor Kellum is out on this one. Uh, I'll ask North Perth planner Sean Yilmaz for brief comments. Sean, welcome. Hi, thank you, and good evening, Mayor Kaysenberg, members of council. So yeah, uh, just this request for the removal of a one-foot reserve, which is located at the north end of the existing McLaren Avenue, and which is the, at the entrance for the development lands owned by Makeham Developments. These lands are now subject of plan of condom condominium NP20-01, which were approved by the County of Perth on December 3rd, 2020, for the development of 15 residential dwelling units through a vacant land condominium. Um, the entrance to the property includes a municipally owned one foot reserve and must be removed in order to pro provide access to the site and allow for works to commence. Uh, staff can confirm that it is an appropriate time uh, to release this one foot reserve by establishing uh, th this reserve as a public highway. As such, it is staff's recommendation that council approve bylaw number four, 2021, being a bylaw to establish a highway at reserve C of plan 411. Uh, thank you. Thanks, Mr. Yilmaz. Uh, councilors, any questions or, or first comments on this matter? We're not seeing any, so we have a resolution for our consideration that reads as follows that bylaw Number four 2021 being a bylaw to establish a highway, not really a highway, but a highway at reserve C of plan 411, uh, North Perth, McLaren Avenue North, Listville, and that the said bylaw be introduced, read and considered read a first, second and third time and be finally passed. And the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Can I call on Councillor Andreessen to, our be, to be our mover for that one? Yes, I'll move that motion. Thank you. And Councillor Anstead, will you be our seconder for that one? Yes, I would second that motion. Thank you. Thanks. Any discussion or debate? We're not seeing any indication of that. So are there any opposed? And let the record show that Deputy Mayor Callum did not participate in the vote. Thank you. So that is carried. Uh, next up then is uh, item 5.3. As I said, they've changed the order in the agenda a little bit for us. So uh, tonight, 5.3 means reports from the Treasury and Finance Department. As item 5.3.1, finance staff is brought forward for council review. The accounts as of this day, January 18th, 2021, I note that some councillors have declared a potential pecuniary interest in this item and thus absent themselves from consideration and voting. Are there any questions from council about this matter? Seeing none, I have a resolution before me that reads as follows, that the following summary of account be received by council for information. The bottom line reads total $1,418,605.37 uh, can I call on Councillor Duncan to be our mover for that tonight? Yes, I'll move that motion. Thank you. And Councillor Johnston, will you be our seconder? Yes, I would second that. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, are there any opposed? And that is deemed carried. Thank you. Uh, as item 5.3.2, Council is asked to provide for an interim tax levy for 2021. This happens prior to budget approval and assumes that the levied amount remains on the same basis as the previous financial year. Note that this includes provisions uh, for penalties and interest for late payments. I believe Ms. Belfour is with us, our Deputy Treasurer. 
to uh, assist us with uh, this matter. Uh, Becky, welcome. You have a few comments on this one. Thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg, Council. Uh, uh, as you had indicated, this is our interim levy uh, bylaw to allow for the billing of, of interim taxes. We set the uh, to due date, and it also allows us to do the billing of uh, waste bins and add any outstanding items that would be added to taxes in the licensing, water, sewer, and accounts receivable at that time. Uh, with the due dates also then of March 17th and June 16th, if Council would. Uh, I'd like to move forward with this bylaw. Thank you. Um, if I might ask a quick question about um, the issues of uh, current penalties uh, for late uh, fees and the interest policies, um, where are we at with that? We're at 0.375 monthly um, that we are charging instead of the regular 1.25. I believe it was September that we've moved to that um, with council's permission. Uh, seems to be going well. I think that we've heard some people appreciating that fact. So um, that's where we're at with that. Okay, thank you. Um, councilors, any other questions or first comments about this matter? We're not seeing any. So I have uh, two resolutions, one a bylaw. Uh, let's deal with the resolution first uh, that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth consider bylaw 5 2021 being a bylaw to provide for an interim tax. Oh, it's I got the same document twice. Should I have that? The resolution and bylaw. Sorry, quick confer with the clerk here. Okay, thank you. That helps me clarify that. A little wording lesson here. Uh, okay, so we do have two two things here. The Council of the Municipality of North Perth consider bylaw 5 2021 being a bylaw to provide for an interim tax levy be introduced, read, and considered read for a second and third time and be finally passed. The said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Councillor Barons, will you serve as a mover for that one? Yes, I would move that motion. Thank you. Thanks. And uh, Deputy Mayor Kellum, will you be our seconder? Yes, I'll second that motion. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Any discussion or debate on that one? Seeing none, are there any opposed? Please make it manifest. We're not seeing any opposed, so we'll call that carried. And next then is the actual bylaw. So we were voting to consider it. Now we're voting to deal with it. I'm following the bouncing ball. And the actual bylaw reads that bylaw number 5 2021 being a bylaw to provide for an interim tax levy be introduced, read, and considered read a first, second, and third time and be finally passed. Let the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Can I call on Councillor Richardson to be our mover for that? I will move that. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Rothwell, won't you be our seconder? I'll second the motion. Thank you. Any discussion or debate on the bylaw? Seeing none, are there any opposed? And we're not seeing any, so that is carried. Thank you very much. And thank you. Uh, nice to have you at our meeting tonight, Becky. Um, now let's move on to item uh, 5.4. 5.4. Sorry, my notes are somewhat absent here. Uh, we have no report from the uh, manager of environmental services tonight, although I think there's a bylaw matter for him later. Um, the next item then is item 5.5, reports from the uh, operations department. And uh, as item 5.5.1, council is asked to consider the results of a tender for the Gilkinson Municipal Drain and to award this tender. I'm gonna ask Mr. Couch, our manager of operations to address this matter. Uh, welcome, Mr. Couch. Thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg, members of council. Uh, as you can see, there was a wide variety of bidding for this municipal drain uh, construction project from 227,000 to 520,000. Um, the budget was set at 231,000 with the low bid slightly below that. Uh, the award after review and reference checking through the municipal engineer that's serving the project is to award to the low bidder. 
and the recommendation is front is in front of you for uh, the project. Thank you, uh, Lyndon. Any questions for Mr. Couch from Council or first comments on this matter? We're not seeing any, so we'll consider the resolution that has been drafted for our, our clock here. But the Council of the Municipality of North Perth award a tender for the Gilkinson Municipal Drain Realignment as per the recommendation from RJ Burnside and Associates Limited to Doslan Construction in the amount of $227,750 HST excluded. And I call on Councillor Seiler to be our mover. I would so move that, thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Andreessen, will you be our seconder? Yes, I'll second that motion. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, uh, are there any opposed? We're not seeing any indication of that, so we'll call that one carried as well. Thank you. For item 5.6, uh, we have no report from the fire chief, although I was advised that a new tanker was delivered to our listable station this morning, and the little boy in me wanted to go, but the wise mayor in me said uh, essential visits only. So uh, for those who... Uh, were uh, keeping score, the mayor did something right on that front today. Um, let's turn to item 5.7 reports for council from our uh, programs department then. Um, we uh, have a report in our agenda package uh, uh, to decision making about maintaining ice at the municipality's three indoor arenas, plus a little bit of information about or arenas that are, or outdoor rinks that are being uh, contemplated and worked on if the weather would just cooperate. So I think I'll ask our manager of programs, Amy Gangle, to give us the scoop on this one. Welcome, Amy. Thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg and members of council. Uh, yes, so in my report, I actually have three areas for council's consideration. So I will um, suggest that I cover each individually, allow uh, for discussion and questions, and then um, um, uh, ask for direction from council for each one at a time, just to make things a bit simpler. So uh, due to the rise in the COVID cases, the Ontario government in consultation with the Chief Medical Officer of Health and the other health experts imposed a province-wide shutdown that came into effect as of January, as, as of December 26th. The COVID response framework was paused when the province-wide shutdown came into effect. Prior to that, the municipality was under the orange restrict level. As a result, the North Perth facilities were closed to the public on December 26th. Adjustments were made and measures taken to reduce the operational costs. With the possibility of reopening the January 25th, it was more cost effective for us to keep the ice in, adjusting our temperature controls and allowing the colder temperatures to help us maintain the ice. Ontario declared a second provincial emergency to address the COVID-19 crisis effective January 14th, 2021. These orders are in effect until February 11th. With the extension here, the municipality is faced with the decision of whether to keep the ice in as it is and be available to open after February 11th or whenever we're allowed to open. Uh, so that would meet our community benefit to help with physical and mental health or to take the ice out in one or all of the arenas in North Perth, reducing our operating costs for the department. So the staff have collected as much information as we possibly can um, to share with council to assist them uh, uh, with this decision and um, asking uh, staff asking for some assistance and guidance from council. Regarding the indoor arenas, uh, there's a combination of options. I've listed some of them. Um, maintaining all of our ice until uh, that February date um, or maintaining two of them, maintaining one, taking all of the ice out, taking all of them out, possibly putting one back in, uh, or any other combination council can think of. Um, one thing just being obviously aware of is that if we do take one or two of the ice out, then um, all our user groups will be traveling to one site. Um, so we will be asking all our user groups to share available ice times. So regarding ice usage, uh, so we are assuming that 
if and when we can get a reopen for our region, it would begin at the red control level. And there are certain restrictions involved with that. One of the main ones restricting operations is the maximum capacity of 10. Uh, so with that, we asked our user groups if we were to open back up with red under those to give us their best estimate. Understanding there's a lot of unknowns that these user groups have and we're very thankful for their input and the guidance that they've had and sharing some, some their best guesses of what they could see uh, for their groups. So we've provided a summary of those um, layouts as best as we possibly can for council. I would say uh, looking at what the usage is, probably be able to offset one um, depending on whether we went you know, we could get into orange suitor, we might be able to offset hours for two. It really is unknown at this point. We did, I late, so it's so just some uh, education for uh, council to be aware of what we do. So um, normally our compressors run for about 10 hours on the hour and now we've adjusted our temperatures again, just to maintain the ice. So now we've reduced that down to two, or two to four hours a day. So it does help with some of our um, utility and operating costs. Obviously thankful with the, we're very thankful with the outdoor cooler weather. It also is helping us out. Uh, as we get into the spring weather though, as the weather warms up, it makes it much more challenging to be able to maintain the ice, especially for costs. Uh, the one uh, facility of the three is a bit better, is better built for this, which would be the Steve Kerr. We highlighted what our normal season operating hours would be. So normally we would close the Wallace Arena March 14th. Normally Moncton would be March 23rd and normally Steve Kerr would be April 28th. Just to give council a guideline what the normal season might be. If we were to take the, take the ice out, uh, it would take staff a full solid week of hours in order to prepare it. That would be very tight, but they assure that they, they could make it happen. Uh, the startup cost for that would be nine to ten thousand dollars. Would be dependent on our um, uh, ice technician as well to be able to come in. Uh, if we are considering removing and putting ice back in, we do feel that it would likely cost more than just leaving it in for these next three weeks. We did a survey and the information is ongoing. Um, we've given a status of what surrounding arenas, decisions that have been made. Um, you'll see there's a combination of some have taken all of their ice out already. Some are taking some of their ice out. Some have left some of their ice in. Uh, we did, uh, we received uh, some information also regionally. So Southwestern Ontario, and this includes the uh, larger cities. 43% are not removing their ice, 24% are removing all their ice, and 24% removing half the ice, and 9% undecided. This would have been uh, effective on Friday, but you know, with uh, the weekend, there may be some additional changes to that. We did highlight to council the responsibilities that our department has. These are responsibilities that we do um, with the ice in or out. There's just some additional responsibilities that we have as we shut down, if we were to shut down and what processes we have and um, they are required um, responsibilities to be able to do. So those are highlights with regards to that. Wondering if council has any questions or if they would ha have any insight or directions to give staff with regards to the usage of our three arenas in North Perth. Thanks, Ms. Gangle. Uh, if you counsel uh, ask us a question, um, I certainly would be speak to at this point. Mr. Bearfelds, do you have anything? Yes. Councillor Anstead first. Thanks, Mayor Kaysenberg, through you. Thanks, Amy, for the report. Very detailed. I really appreciate it. Um, I know you touched on it a little bit in your remarks and in the report as well, just regarding the usage. Um, have you had more in-depth conversations with the user groups of these facilities? Uh, the summary that you have seen is the in-depth <laughs> survey that we've received. Uh, that's the best that our user groups can give us right now. Okay. Thank you. So Rothwell next. Thanks, Mayor Todd. Uh, through you and thanks, Amy, for the report. Uh, uh, just 
can you refresh our memory uh, again back uh, last March uh, when we uh, everything was closed down? Uh, how did we operate with the uh, three arenas, please? Uh, when the um, pandemic occurred, like when yes. that started. Okay. Um, yep. Yeah. So we uh, we didn't uh, close the arena right away. It was uh, within a couple of weeks. Uh, making the determination, uh, understanding. It was mid-March, which was two of our arenas were already closing. Uh, that was their seasonal closing. So those ones were able to follow just what our per schedule was. When it came to um, the Steve Kerr arena, it was evaluating the usage, taking a look at what the extensions for the uh, emergency orders were and there became too many restrictions to extend it for just that extra month. So then we decided to close that. Thank you. You're welcome. Professor Barron's next. Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor Todd. Through you, Amy, excellent report. Um, you always have such detail in your reports. It's, it's amazing. Um, a question about the advertising. Is it paid monthly or one lump sum at the beginning of every year, or how is it normally paid? Sorry, thanks. Thanks, you jumped the gun there, but yes, I can. I can answer the advertisement questions. Um, our policy: we do invoice once a year. It is an annual fee. Um, our policy are is an, a one-year minimum agreement. They are invoiced typically in January, which we have done that. Um, so the rates that you see, we gave an example of, of a half rate only seeing as if we were, if the arenas were closing now, essentially they received half of a season um, for, for this year. Even if we run open in, in September, they still only have get a half year for this season. So we've invoiced for 2021. Okay, hey, Councillor Andreessen next. Hi, uh, through you, Mayor Todd. Um, just in the report, Amy, I noticed that um, the orders are in effect, the stay-at-home orders are in effect until February 11th. And I just checked, and actually it's been extended already until February the 19th. And I'm not sure if you were aware of that. That happened on the weekend, and you might have written this report prior to that. I'm not sure, does that you know, extra week um, also have an impact on these decisions or um, would you want to just us make a decision based on the, the 19th and what you're providing at this point? Thank you. Yeah, my apologies and thank you very much, Councillor Andreessen, for, for highlighting that. Yes, um, so that was the emergency orders, but uh, staff's understanding of that is that uh, the order is extended, but that allows um, the province to make determinations with regards to the framework for reopening. So that allows them to decide that. The only areas that have uh, been told um, that they're at gray for that period of time is the, are the larger cities. Our region has yet to be determined. We do anticipate that uh, direction information to be given to us this week. We haven't received that yet. Anyone else on council have comments or thoughts on this one? Okay, so Councillor Seiler now, and then after him, Councillor Johnston. Thank you, Mayor Todd. I guess, Amy, you kind of, threw a monkey wrench there at me um, when you said uh, it's going to cost us more to put the ice back in if we take it out than if we leave it in. Would there be any consideration if we did remove the ice surface to only come back with two arenas and just leave one out permanent and just go with two arenas? Yeah, it, I recommend if, if we are taking all of the ice out and putting ice back in, it would only be with one arena, and just with the time frame that that would be, that would be the season for, for one arena, uh, and just the the way that the Steve Kerr is built, it's built uh, uh, more operationally for warmer weather, 
Um, we can certainly take all of the ice out and then evaluate where things are. Um, we don't know. We don't know if the extension will continue. We don't know if we'll be able to permit having a season. We don't know if our user groups will, will want to uh, or be able to uh, come back. There's a lot of unknowns. Uh, and this is uh, the struggle that staff have been having, trying to work through that. So that's where we're, we're wanting to open the discussion at council level. So if we were to just, uh, if we were to leave the ice service and the Steve Kerr um, and take the ice out of the other two, there might be an option on the table that if it, everything is good, our numbers go down and we're gonna open back up, we could, we could still possibly open another rink. Correct. The Steve Kerr or a second one? Oh, I just say, like you, like you say, the Steve Kerr is, is the most efficiently one. That's one you want, you'd want to leave it in for the yes. time being. Yes. And then we took the ice out of the other two arenas. There'd be the option where we're at at the February 15th, we could add one or we could add two, right? All options are on the table. <laughs> okay. That's just. It, like you say, it, it, it's, a, it's a crab shoot, it's a gamble. And, you know, the numbers went down today to 2,500. So is that how, it'd be just great if they keep doing that and there's light at the end of the tunnel. So, okay, thank you very much. Councillor Johnston. Thank you, Mayor Todd. And thank you, Amy, for a great report. And I, I'm gonna comment just carrying on from where I think Terry was heading. And I think um, I think that for the well-being of our community and stuff, that should there be some light at the end of the tunnel, um, that we should leave the ice in the Steve Kerr. I think the other two, um, with them, them being not as efficient, and I know that this year nothing, none of them were as busy as they have been, so I think we should take the ice out of the, the other two arenas being Wallace and Moncton, and I would be in favor of leaving the ice in at this point in the Steve Kerr. Thank you for your report, Amy. Extremely well done. And it was very interesting to look at what our neighbors are doing as well. But I'd be in favor of leaving it in the uh, Steve Kerr. Uh, Councillor Richardson next. Uh, thank you. Good report, Amy. Um, I tend to agree with uh, Councillor Seiler and Councillor Johnston that possibly leaving it in the most efficient arena that we possibly can in the event that there's light at the end of the tunnel, um, that if we couldn't possibly get back to it, that I think that would be the best bet and just leave the ice in the one. Um, yes, it is dollars and cents, but nobody has a crystal ball to know what the future is going to dictate for all of us. So I would certainly think that leaving it in the Steve Kerr uh, for the time being would be the best and uh, take the ice out of the other two it can offset a bit of costs, but we don't know what February is going to bring. We don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. So it's, it's how long is a piece of rope at this point in time? We don't know. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Duncan. Next. Uh, at this point, I think I'm going to agree with the other councillors. I think just for efficiency reasons, we can leave the, the Steve Kerr in at this point, and maybe we should be removing the other two. And... The advertisement uh, stuff, I'd like to see something done for the people that advertise for sure, like whether we are going to refund them or whether we're going to give them the, a half rate into 2021. I think that council needs to make their choice on what we're going to do there as well. I think that's coming up in the next section. I think Amy said that she has three pivotal questions for us, so uh, we're good. You're next. Yes, sir, you, Mayor Todd. Yes, I agree with the past four councillors' comments as well. I believe we should leave in the uh, Steve Kerr uh, Memorial Arena ice, and hopefully there's light at the end of the tunnel. And uh, as and Amy, a great report, absolutely. And, and as we see, it's it would likely be uh, beneficial for us at this time. Thank you. Thanks, and and it seems like we've coalesced on a solution here that I feel I've felt coming into this meeting. So. Um, I, I to agree. So I think council could give direction at this point on the first matter. Um, 
do it in parts, Pat, or do you want to do this uh, at the end? We have one omnibus resolution that us all three pieces. Uh, that's good. That's good. Okay, we'll do it in parts. So our first resolution, I think, it, with Council's consent, will be to the effect that Council directs staff to remove the ice at the Logan Recreation Complex and the Wallace Arena and to uh, maintain the ice with adjusted temperatures at Steve Kerr until uh, normal closing time, unless otherwise directed. Something like that. Does that sound right, uh, Pat? Seems like a reasonable resolution. All right. Um, Anstead, could I call on you to be our mover for that one? Yes, I would move that motion. Thank you. Thanks. Councillor Behrens, will you be our seconder? Yes, I will second that motion. Good. Okay. Any further discussion or debate on? The first of three options here. Okay, well, I don't think we're seeing any. So, um, are there any opposed? All right, uh, that's carried. Wow. Wisdom of Solomon is being applied systematically to our, our challenges here. Okay, Amy, uh, item number two, I think, pertains to the arena advertising. So, let's uh, give you the floor for that one. Certainly, thank you. Yes, this section is much shorter, but um, it just came timely. Uh, we, as I said in January or last week, we sent out our invoices for advertisement per our advertisement uh, policy for arenas. Um, and we've uh, received feedback from businesses having a request um, whether uh, they have concerns of paying for their full advertisement for a year when their arenas have been closed. They were open for the our facilities were open for the end of last year. However, restricted numbers didn't allow for spectators those pieces. So so there were uh, users just uh, on a lower scale. Um, so we uh, felt bringing this with regards to uh, the arenas uh, being open or closed for consideration uh, to offer a discounted rate to our businesses for the year of 2021. Um, we did give you a highlight of what our total billing cost is and an estimated if it was a half rate. Certainly council can choose any percentage if they choose any at all. Um, we just wanted to give you some, some uh, financial um, guidance on that, as well as a list of the inventory of all of the arena ads that occur in all our facilities. So again, seeking uh, some um, direction from council, we've listed a couple of options open to uh, anything uh, that we can assist our, our local businesses. They are uh, wonderful supporters of, our, of us, of our user groups. Um, understanding that the, the usage of the facilities is not to the full capacity of it normally being, that we felt as staff it was reasonable to bring this forward for council's consideration. Thanks, Amy. Um, Councillors, any questions or comments on this one? I'll, I'll start if that's all right. It must be a little bit typical. Uh, I'm not convinced that 50% is deep enough. I would go a little deeper than that. I think I would, I would probably charge about 30% of the annual rate that uh, we would charge given the much diminished exposure and the much diminished season that we're creating uh, in this, maybe with the exception of the Kerr complex because of the decision we just made, the first impressions anyway. Other councillors with impressions? Councillor Richardson, you're next. Uh, thank you. I would also tend to agree that possibly just given the biz totally bizarre year and season that it has been that the um, ELRC and the uh, Wallace Community Centre, we could possibly look at doing a much greater increase, and especially if we're taking the ice out a little um, sooner, uh, a, a greater increase in the discount that we could do for next year and possibly still do more for the uh, Steve Kerr Memorial Complex. I just think that even 50% might not be deep enough because the overall cost of the in the revenue that we generate from the advertising is not a phenomenal amount of money. It certainly offsets and helps the costs and stuff. But I do think that we need to, <clears throat> pardon me, come to bat, come to bat a little bit for some of the businesses that have advertised and limited patrons and limited. There's there's been so many limiting factors that have really affected any visual public participancy of 
public advertising that I think that it's either that or give a much bigger discount down or discount for next year, uh, bigger than 50%, uh, 50% to start. But if we could do even more, I think it would be a great gesture because like I said in the previous comment, we don't know where this is going to go that I think we have to do. Because obviously I would certainly think that as far as viewership and what they've received for visual perceptions of the sign, it's been significantly less than 50%. I'll guarantee that, like uh, over the course of the end of last year and of right now. So, thank you. Thanks, Councillor Richardson. Councillor Anstetz next. Actually, uh, Councillor Barons was first, Mayor Kaysenberg, but. Sorry about that, Councillor Barons. Um, yeah, I, I know this seems highly unusual coming from me, but if they paid. 100% in 2020, they never got their money's worth either. And I'm just wondering really out loud, and I know this might not be popular, but I really do think we probably owe them 50% for 2020 and 50% for 2021 across the board, make it fair, make it even for everyone. And potentially we may have to look for 2022 uh, as a half rate as well, but we'll cross that um, bridge when we come to it. But I really do think that, you know, in support of our local businesses, they're the ones that are advertising and um, not really getting what their money's worth was. I would highly recommend 50% for the past year and 2021. Those are my comments. Thank you. Can I just check, uh, you would, um, so you'd have a discount for the last year, which would be applied to the current year. Is that sort of the practical way to do this uh, at Julie or staff? Well, I'm not sure what the practical way is, but if, if they all paid their 100% in 2020, then they don't owe us anything for 2021. We can simply write them a letter and say, you know, upon reconsideration, and the COVID experience, we feel this is fair um, and would like to hear their feedback, but you know, we don't need to accept their checks for 2021 either. So um, unless there's some new advertisers or whatever, I just personally believe it's a fair and reasonable thing to do. Thank you. Thanks for clarifying. Um, Councillor Seiler was next. Thank you, Mayor Todd. I've, I echo what I've heard here from Councilor Richardson, Mayor Kaysenberg, and Julie. And I did have a kind of a question on the, her uh, answer, and I agree wholeheartedly with what Councilor Burns has said. Um, I think that would be, be fair I, because the, the billing has, has already gone out to them as of now, right? So we have to respond with a letter on and, and tell them what we've decided to do. Is that right, Amy? Yeah, we've let them know that we were bringing this forward for council's consideration. Um, so we, we could just reverse those charges if need be. I will note that probably from a financial perspective, not speaking of the finance department, it might be easier just to work it all through the 2021 charges. I'm not sure if we could backtrack to 2020 at this stage with the budget. Perhaps we can. Um, but covering it all for 2021, that, not sure. That sounds, that sounds good to me, and I think we'll have to relook at it when we do get somewhat normal. Thank you. I'm sure we can figure that. Councillor Anstead is next. Thanks, Mayor Kaysenberg, through you. And I'll just be brief because everybody's already had some really good comments, and I do wholeheartedly agree with them. I just feel, again, whatever we can do to support these businesses, I could be wrong, but I don't think businesses are really uh, looking at advertising right now. I think they're trying to use those funds for just to stay afloat. So again, I, I think Councillor Barron's had a great suggestion going back to last year even, um, because yeah, they didn't get their full money last year. And then this year they probably don't have money for, for advertising. So um, yeah, absolutely. Whatever we can do to, to help them out, I would be in support of. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And um, I'll say that, that um, uh, happy enough to go with that, the suggestion 
Uh, we do the, the essentially a full discount. half credited to 2021. Um, happy to go deeper for sure. Um, uh, Councilor Richardson, you have a supplementary comment? Uh, yes, I, I totally agree with uh, Councillor Barron's um, initiative to go 50% for either year, but if it makes it easier to roll it into one year or the possibility for this year and subsidize 2020 or 2022, whatever is easiest for the finance department, I would certainly think would be uh, the best. I don't think we want to have to reinvent the wheel to do this, but uh, it's okay to do the right thing. And I think this is the right thing right now and whatever works out best for at the end of the day, the dollars and cents will still wash out. So whatever will work well for the finance department and make it easier that I think uh, I agree with that 50-50 over two years would uh, equal up to more of a substantial increase into one year. So I am totally in support of that. Thank you. Thanks, Councilor Richardson. Next up is Debbie. Yes, sir, you, Mayor Kaysenberg. Uh, obviously, everyone has fielded uh, several calls on this, and uh, I totally agree with all these past comments, especially with uh, Councilor Barron's and and what just uh, Councillor Richardson said, let's just make it uh, work uh, right for everyone to help them out through these times. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So, um, I, I gather there may be some concerns about the quality of my microphone at this point, but uh, we've called on uh, IT staff to have uh, an evaluation. Um, so it seems to me like we are moving towards a consensus on this one reasonably quickly as well. And in the absence of uh, someone saying now, no, let's not do that, um, why don't we create a, another motion here to give uh, staff direction? I think it's probably to the effect of um, the, the Council of the Municipal North Perth directs staff to uh, engage with uh, current advertisers and provide them with a discount um, equivalent to 50% for 2020 and 50% reduction for 2021. And leave the logistics part out of the motion and address that um, however they wish to do that. Um, let's see here. Um, Councillor Duncan, would you serve as a mover for that one? Yes, I'll move that. Thank you. And Deputy Mayor Callum, will you serve as our seconder for that one? Yes, I will second that motion. Thank you. Okay. Um, any further discussion or debate on this one? We're not seeing any. So are there any opposed? Please so declare in the chat function. Okay, we're not seeing any there. So that's scary. Uh, so now part three of our... Um, of our discussion. Uh, Ms. Gangle, you want to pick up at part three? Thank you, Mayor Kaseberg. Uh, yes, so our third is um, just sharing information regarding outdoor rinks in North Perth. Um, so the Atwood Lions have been working very hard at building the outdoor rink in Atwood. Uh, during this COVID situation, the recreation facility staff have also been building ice for outdoor rinks at the tennis courts in Listwell and in Moncton. We've been working very closely with the Atwood Lions, speaking with them and they've, the, the rink uh, committee um, members um, support this idea. Our perspective of it is uh, to offer outdoor rinks for our citizens close to where they live and preventing those larger members from, from drawing to one location, for, again, from a safety perspective. At this point, or as of last week, the weather conditions were delaying their opening. We have created our COVID procedures as well as COVID, have COVID safety plans in place. And we are prepared to supervise all three of these outdoor rinks during the operating hours. Um, and this will include active screening the participants, maintaining the maximum capacity, which currently is five, uh, physical distancing and contact tracing. The updated public health and workplace safety measures in the province-wide shutdown does permit the outdoor rink amenity to open, subject to conditions and weather permitting. Under the shutdown, the maximum is five skaters. Discussion at the January 14th Huron Perth Public Health Stakeholders meeting uh, supported outdoor rinks, provided the COVID measures were in place, including maximum capacities with an emphasis on those capacities to be within households. 
if it can be managed in a safe way, it would give an option for citizens to exercise outdoors. So the outdoor rinks would provide good physical activity opportunity and benefit to mental health. There is question of whether this sends a conflicting message to the community to stay home as much as possible. Staff are seeking directions from council regarding opening door, the outdoor rinks during this time. Um, the other thing to note with outdoor rinks, they are weather dependent and ice condition dependent. So we would, if we were uh, permitted to open, we would, they would operate per those conditions. I've given some highlights from the stay at home order where this is applicable as well as the stage one order as a recreational amenity, just so for, for council's reference. And again, reiterating that we will um, follow uh, recreation or our COVID uh, protocols with that. So just again, seeking council's thoughts and, and direction with regards to whether they would like us to proceed with opening or closing. If anybody's been aware in the news, there's a combination. Some are actually building more rinks. Others are, have closed, full out closed their, their rinks. So there's a dichotomy, you know, everybody's doing a little bit of both. There are some rinks that, some different health units that are permitting uh, different capacities. Currently our health unit is comfortable with the capacity of five. So that is the number that we have. If there's adjustments that can be made later, we'd be willing to, to work with that. Um, I think one step that we uh, have, have added is having staff attend it. We feel that this is our part to be able to make sure that these amenities are safe for public use, that we're doing the best we can for our citizens if they were to open. However, we, we do understand we want to make sure that we're not sending, uh, you know, getting mixed messages that the community may not want us to. So we thought we would just seek Council's direction and their thoughts regarding outdoor rinks for 2021. Thanks, Amy. I can uh, chime in a piece of information that you would not have is that um, we did have a meeting with heads of council uh, last week in which I participated and uh, he was asked about outdoor, uh, outdoor rinks and was fairly supportive of them opening as long as they were consistent with uh, provisions of uh, the various regulations and, and actions of the provincial government. So um, the premier himself has suggested that uh, outdoor rinks aren't such a bad thing. Uh, Councillor Richardson. Uh, thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg. I totally agree that uh, with everything else that is going on, the least that we can do is, uh, as long as we're adhering to COVID uh, prob um, proper safety measures and the quantity of people that can be there at a time, we've got to keep them open. Uh, we need to keep them open. They're weather dependent. We need to give people a little something. So they they must stay open, in my opinion. Um, if things change, things change every day. We all know that. But they've got to be open, full stop. Thanks, Matt. Um, uh, Councillor Duncan is next. Matt, too. Yes, I'm fully in favor of keeping our outdoor rinks uh, open, too, and from the looks of the weather in the next uh, week or so where they're going to have a chance to make some good ice and give our citizens at least a little bit of chance to to get out for some exercise even though they can't use our indoor facilities thanks uh, Councillor johnston is next wholeheartedly agree let's keep them open thanks dave uh, Councillor anstead next yeah, thanks, Mayor Kaysenberg, and I do agree with everybody. I am in support of keeping the outdoor rinks open. Um, the only question I have, and I don't want to be a downer um, on this, but just regarding enforcement of protocols, um, Amy, do you have any uh, idea of what that would look like just to ensure that we don't have too many people on the outdoor rinks at one time and that they are adhering to all the public health guidelines? Thank you. Certainly. Um, uh, through you, Mayor, um... We discussed this as staff and we felt comfortable because of our experience with um, supervising the splash pad over the summer, we felt we would follow similar protocols to that. So there would be a staff member on site during those operating hours. When the operating hours are not there, there would be closed signs. People would not be permitted to it. We would have signs that would indicate the maximum capacity our staff would do the active screening, make sure that there's no more than five people at a time. If there's a capacity, 
then uh, we would limit the participation to 30 minutes. And that's a similar protocol that what we followed with our, our walking track. So we're following similar protocols that we've, we've practiced and staff are familiar with um, to be able to, uh, to make sure that our staff are as comfortable as possible and the public is safe. We uh, will do contact tracing. So we will have uh, attendance of, of uh, the individuals participating should we require that, should the health unit require that for us. Okay, no, that's great. That's what I wanted to hear. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think the team has gotten it down to fine science at this point. Um, I suppose the only thing that I'm thinking about is pre-registrations versus uh, people just showing up and uh, if there's anything that we can do with existing technologies or to, to sort of support pre-registration so that people with a, a sense that they're going to get on a reasonable you know, it could get to be minus 20 out there. I don't think you want to stand up there and wait for half of your return. Yeah, staff have discussed that, and we're, we're working on that, trying to figure that out. Um, having a staff out at these rinks, there will be no no uh, technology or means other than a phone call to let them know those the, the, their spots available. So um, we thought we might start with the drop-in just to see if... Um, how, what the numbers are, what it looks like, just similar to what we did with the splash pad and uh, in the walking track. And then if we felt we needed to have some um, 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 booking, we can do that. Uh, but if, if staff can figure logistically how we can do this, we, we can definitely do that. Great, thanks, Sydney. Uh, Deputy Mayor Kellum next. Yes, thank you, through you, Mayor Kaysenberg. Uh, yes, I totally agree that we keep these, these rinks open. But uh, Amy, just to be clear, we're only we're only talking how many rinks that we're going to be supervising? Three. Okay, thank you. It, it, it seems like we've come to a fairly easy consensus here as well, um, unless uh, councillors uh, uh, who haven't heard from yet have significant objection. Um, I will move forward to that uh, the council direct staff to support the opening of the rinks in three locations. Um, help me out here, Amy. It's Listowel, Moncton, and Atwood? Correct. Thank you. In Listowel, Moncton, and Atwood. And uh, be directed to provide appropriate staff supports for safe and uh, appropriate management of these facilities in accordance with um, Ontario related to the pandemic. Like that. That sound passable, Pat? Okay, uh, Austin, you said you enthusiastically support that. So of course, I would move that. Thank you, Councillor Richardson. You seemed all. Uh, will you second that? Absolutely, second that motion. Very good. Uh, any further discussion or debate before we consider this in a vote? Hearing none. If there are any opposed, please manifest chat window we're not seeing any so we're calling that carried much council amy thanks for an amazing report um the level of detail really supported um us the issues uh effectively and and coming to an understanding of of what's needed for our very appreciated we appreciate council's direction thank you uh, that brings us to item six on our agenda for item 6.1. Councillors, are there any reports that you'd like to ask staff or our committees? Again, to request an opportunity to speak to this, please indicate in the chat function in our web conferencing tool. Councillor Rothwell. Thanks very much, Mayor Todd. And uh, the, the question or, or response uh, is for our county councillors. There was another accident at... Uh, Perth Road uh, 140 and uh, Perth Line 91 uh, recently. And I was just wondering if uh, there was a specific update as to when the proposed changes uh, are to occur uh, at that intersection. Thank you. Um, I, I, I don't know that they set a firm timeline on it. I know that it, it was um, covered in the capital presentation at the last county council meeting. And we know that the County of Wellington is taking the lead on the in initiative of installing traffic lights. But I'm not sure I heard a timeline. Uh, maybe Deputy Mayor Callum or Councillor Duncan, did you hear a timeline on that? 
Yes, I did. I believe if all goes well, they're hoping, and if all goes well, Alan or Councilor Rothwell, they're hoping by the end of February, John has said. I appreciate that uh, response and perhaps uh, our county councilors could have a conversation with staff. Uh, there was a, a very good article in the list of a banner there and uh, I think it would be uh, appropriate if uh, you know, either the County of Perth or the County of Wellington uh, actually could uh, provide the further information through to the public because uh, this seems to be a growing issue as opposed to something that people are becoming uh, more cautious about. So I appreciate the response, thank you. Thanks, Councillor Rothwell and uh, Deputy Mayor Callum for uh, having a better memory than me on that matter. I appreciate it. Um, anyone else? Councillor Seiler is next. Just to add a comment there, uh, Alan, uh, I was just through there last week and the polls are there and they've got it all marked out and the flags are there and they're working on it as of today. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Andreessen next. Thank you through you, Mayor Kaysen Burke. Um, at our budget meeting last week, we had talked about um, kind of relooking at some of the uh, or most of the department business plans uh, in order to look at um, you know any projects that probably could be postponed or taken off plates. And I just wondered if um, perhaps. Um, CEO Chris Snell could speak to whether that might be coming forward at a possible upcoming uh, council meeting in the future. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Andreessen. CAO Snell. Thank you for the question. So our plan right now, and depending on how many delegations or public meetings we're having, we're going to start with the first meeting in February and bring them forward. Um, um, in subsequent council meetings, and we may bring them forward one or two at a time, depending on um, the rest of the agenda, so we don't keep council all night. But that, that's sort of the plan to deal with it in, in February's council meetings. Um, thank you. Just uh, one supplementary, if you don't mind, uh, CAO Snell. Will it be possible for you to, or f um, through the clerk's office, to send us? those plans that need to be reviewed in, a, in advance, just so that we're able to really take a closer look at those plans before we hit the meetings, thanks. Yes, that can be done. But I would suggest, as I said at the last week's budget meeting, um, council has the plans from, it was in the package um, um, last week that was, was sent out to council. So if they could just start um, reviewing those plans um, from that standpoint and highlighting the ones that they think can be either um, deleted or deferred, that would be a, a good first start in how we progress with this project. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Andreessen and, and CEO Snell. Anyone else? Under number six. All right. Okay, so we'll move on to item seven. Uh, we have received no items of correspondence uh, beyond that shared during the consent agenda for council's evaluation or disposition. That brings us to council to item number eight, sorry, on our agenda, uh, wherein we consider some bylaws. And uh, we have two of them tonight. Uh, item 8.1, council is asked to enact a bylaw authorizing agreement amongst the municipalities of Perth County for mutual aid. Um, Kirk Berfelds, do you have any comments to make on this one just to help us with this or are we, is this fairly straightforward from your perspective? Oh, it's a renewal agreement from? Anyone. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, Mr. Couch, do you have any comments on this? Kirk Berfeld says that um, you might be the, the one. Yes, thank you, uh, Mayor Kaysenberg. This really stemmed from the modernization project that the municipalities went through for winter control, but it extends to more than just winter activities. It's the sharing of services as needed, especially in an urgent situation, and it allows for that. It's not unlike a boundary agreement. 
where uh, you, it allows the other municipality to come and assist. Um, it's important to understand though, it's as available and as able. Uh, it doesn't uh, bind a municipality to come and assist or bring resources to another municipality. It's, it's on an as needed basis and if available. So um, the document's attached. I can answer any questions that you had from it. And I hope that uh, describes what it's about. Thanks, Mr. Coach. Council, any questions or co first comments on this one before we consider it? Councillor Rothwell. Thanks very much, uh, Mayor Todd. Through you, and just uh, in response to uh, uh, Manager Coach's uh, comments, is uh, Northbrook Council going to receive uh, a uh, presentation in terms of the findings of that uh, study of our? the county and local municipalities uh, in terms of what um, responses or, or uh, yeah, responses to uh, actions or, or is this the, the sum of it? Thank you. Yeah, with regards to the, sorry. Yeah, with regards to the winter modernization program, thank you. Uh, um, there will be another report that will be coming subsequently to this probably in the spring uh, related to uh, the final sum summation of the report as well as any recommendations in terms of implementation. I spoke briefly to this when we did uh, talk about our winter sidewalk maintenance operation uh, and we made some changes there. So we're running through the winter, we're taking a look at the report and we'll be bringing it forward in the spring in terms of any findings and any recommendations for subsequent seasons. Thank you. Anyone further? Okay, I have uh, for our consideration the resolution uh, that bylaw number 6 2021, being a bylaw to authorize the signing of a mutual aid agreement, be introduced, read, and considered read a first, second, and third time, and be finally passed. And the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Can I call on Councillor Rothwell to be our mover for that one? I so move. Thank you. And Councillor Seiler, will you be our seconder? Yes, I'll second that. Thank you very much. Any discussion eight further? Hearing none, are there any opposed? Please indicate it in the chat function. And seeing none, that is carried. Thank you. Item 8.2 is next. Council was asked to enact a bylaw amending the fees and licenses bylaw, particularly with respect to changes in Schedule J, landfill tipping fees. I believe this is pursuant to Council's guidance on this matter. Mr. Mr. Hackett's. Uh, okay, so Mr. Hackett is available. Um, uh, Mark, did you want to make any comments on this one? Uh, thanks, Mayor Kaysenberg. Uh, not really. These are just, like you said, um, this came from the direction given to staff at the meeting, the operational budget meeting last week, and in an attempt to achieve uh, a balanced budget. So um, those changes are reflected in the, the Schedule J. Thanks, Mark. Uh, that's nice, quick action. All right. Uh, um, Council, any questions or first comments on this matter? All right, uh, seeing none, I have a resolution for our consideration that reads as follows, bylaw number seven, 2021 being a bylaw to amend the North Perth rates and fees bylaw, be introduced, read and considered read a first, second and third time and be finally passed. And that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Can I call on Councillor Andreessen to be our mover for that? Yes, I'll make that motion. Thank you. And Councillor Anstead, are, will you serve a second? Yes, I would second that. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion or debate? All right. We're not seeing any indication of that. Are there any opposed? Please indicate it in the chat function. And we're not seeing any. So that is carried. Thank you. Let's move on to item nine on our agenda. Are there any notices of motion from councillors attending this evening? We're not seeing indication of that. That brings us to item 10 on our agenda. For item 10.1, are there any announcements that would be of benefit to our community? 
or that reflect well on North Perth at this time? If you'd like to speak, just indicate through the chat function. And we're starting with CAO Snell. Thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg. Um, you, you kind of stole one of my announcements, but I just wanted to give council the update that as, as mentioned by the mayor earlier in the meeting, Listville did receive um, their new tanker today. Um, it was received by the North Perth Fire Department. Um, it is, as council is aware, the first of three new trucks. Um, the second of those trucks should be here um, in the spring. Um, so that will have two of the three here um, in, in the first quarter. As council will know, tradition is that we would typically have um, all members of council when, when a new fire truck arrives, but um, due to COVID, we, we have delayed that and we will um, make an arrangement for a, a proper and fitting um, unveiling of the, of the truck um, to council in the near future when we're permitted. The second announcement is regard to next Monday night, January 25th. As council may remember, we do have um, a training and education session on the official plan and that will be um, put on by county and North Perth staff. Um, just to um, alleviate um, 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 staff and, and council traveling, um, we are suggesting that um, we can do it completely remotely. Um, um, and so therefore, um, Pat and the mayor can, can do not have to attend the council chambers um, as it's not a regular um, council meeting. So um, that's my announcement. For my announcements for tonight. Um, I'll certainly answer any questions. Thanks, CEO Snell. Any questions about this? Deputy Mayor Kellum is next. Yes, thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg. Just, uh, I haven't been ignoring you. I just didn't reply back to the email. Can you just touch base a little bit on the email about the coldest night of the year opportunity, team opportunity, and what that all entails, please? Uh, yes, uh, uh, a little bit at least. Um, uh, certainly the uh, Affordable Housing and Homelessness Committee is a subcommittee of the North Perth Committee of the United Way of uh, Perth Huron has, um, has secured the opportunity to run a special fundraising event uh, in February and uh, it's called Coldest Night of the Year. This event intends to raise funds that will be uh, spent in this community on uh, housing and homelessness solutions. And uh, the opportunity exists to create teams. I, I was advised that the typical team size is somewhere between seven and 10 people. So it, it appealed to me that um, council with 10 members uh, might formulate uh, an appropriate size team. Uh, the apparent activity is to um, walk on your own for two or five kilometers uh, during a specific period, I think it's near the end of February, and um, to raise pledges and funds uh, for your walk so that we can contribute to this fund. And um, this event has been run in other communities. It's the first time uh, that it will be executed in North Carolina. Uh, I personally am, am fairly excited about the opportunity. Um, I certainly need more walking in, according to my wife at least, and so uh, I look forward to the opportunity to uh, participate in that and hope for some good companions on the virtual, almost virtual journey, the isolated journey of our team. That's what I got, uh, Doug. Perfect. That's more clear. Thank you very much. I'll respond. Thank you very much. Um, are there any other uh, announcements for the benefit of the community at this time? Okay, so uh, that allows us to move to agenda item number 11. Uh, council, we have two matters before us to be considered in a closed session uh, meeting of council. Tonight, I'm gonna read the resolution that uh, explains and enables our action to enter a closed session meeting. Uh, the resolution is as follows. This committee proceeding camera at 8.44 p.m. to address a matter matters pertaining to a position, plan, procedure, criteria, or instruction to be applied to any negotiations carried on or to be carried on by or on behalf of the municipality or local board regarding a North Perth Children's Services. And second, a proposed or pending acquisition sale of land for municipal or local board purpose 
regarding the North Perth property described as Plan 441, lots 18 and 21, 218 Win Stanley Street in Moncton. Uh, can I call on Councillor Barons to be our mover for this one? Sure. And Councillor Duncan, will you be our seconder? I certainly will. Thank you. Any discussion or debate on this motion? Seeing none, are there any opposed? We're not seeing any opposed, uh, so we'll call that carried. That means that our, uh, we are temporarily adjourned from our open council meeting. All those who are on the line with us who have not been invited to the closed session council meeting should exit at this time. We will make some changes to the AV settings uh, to make sure that uh, we are indeed in closed session and uh, we will uh, be back with a, a in let's say seven minutes it would be a good time for a bio break. All right, so about seven minutes.
think we're back on. We need confirmation that um, YouTube is here on our, our session at this time. Um, can anyone sort of tune into YouTube and see if there's some audio stream? Okay, so Councillor Richardson, our trusty YouTube checker, tells us that we are back in. Thank you for your special services there, Councillor Richardson. Um, that uh, we have exited closed session and we have nothing to report out at this time to the public with regards to the matters that we discussed. Council as a mandated good practice acts near the end of its meeting agenda to confirm all of its actions and business of its meeting through what's called the confirmatory bylaw. I have the draft of the confirmatory bylaw number 8-2021, which reads as follows. The bylaw number 8-2021 being a bylaw to confirm generally previous actions of the council of the municipality of North Perth be introduced, read, and considered read a first, second, and third time, and be finally passed. Let the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. So I call on Councillor, uh, let's see here, Councillor Duncan to be our mover for that. Yes, I'll move that. Thank you. And Councillor Johnston as our seconder. Yes, I'll second that. Thank you. And of course, please note that there were three councillors who did declare pecuniary interest um, earlier, so they will not participate in this vote. Um, any discussion or debate on the confirmatory uh, bylaw action? Seeing none, are there any opposed? We're not seeing any, so we're going to call that one carried. Thank you. Uh, councillors, that means we've uh, come to the end of our deliberations that were planned. We've taken action on the business that was put before us. And before I read a motion to adjourn, is there any further business? We're not seeing any indication of that. So let's uh, turn to the motion of adjournment, uh, which is right here in the book. Uh, the, the council meeting adjourns at 9.22 p.m. to meet again for general council business on Monday, January 25th, 2021 at 7 p.m. Is that how we want it phrased, Pat? It's a special council meeting. To meet again for a special council meeting on Monday, January 25th, 2021 at 7 p.m. Uh, can I call on Councillor Anstead to be a move? Yes, I would move that, thank you. Thank you, and Councillor Behrens is our seconder. Yes, I will second that motion. Thank you. Of course, that's not debatable. So is there anyone who's opposed? Seeing none, that is carried. Uh, this council will meet again then in a special meeting of council, again using digitally enabled uh, enabling technologies on Monday, January 25th, 2021. And our next regular general council meeting is Monday, February 1st, 2021. Until that point, this meeting is adjourned. Thanks all. Good night all.